<laughs> I mean, so many questions. Hey everyone, it's time to pack your bags and twist and tumble your way back with us to 2008 in episode two of Time Machine, our new original series. I'm bouncing with excitement today because we are headed back to Beijing, China, the site of the Summer Olympic Games, where American Nastia Lukin won the all around gold medal in women's artistic gymnastics. Delighted to say that we are joined by the Olympic champion herself from Dallas, Texas. Hi, Nastia. Hi. As well as Team GB gymnast, she is a Olympian and a world medalist from Nottingham. Hi, Ellie Downey. Hi. And he is our resident gymnastics expert here at Olympic Channel. He's a former Division I gymnast himself from Chicago. Hi, Scott Bregman. Not quite as exciting as the other two, but I'm here. <laughs> Before we go full gymnastics geek on all of you, we've got to set the scene for the year that was 2008. It's time for our warm up. Americans elect Barack Obama as their first black president. Carrie Bradshaw heads to the big screen. The Twilight series debuts. And Brangelina, anyone? It was also the Beijing Olympics. And Nastia, hello, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I want you to go back to January 1st, 2008. What were you thinking heading into the Olympic year? You know, I always made goals and, and vision boards and everything kind of like around every New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And um, this one just felt very different. You know, the year prior was not really my best year um, competitively and um, probably the worst year of my entire career. So I think we really had to just turn the page. So I think it was just like, okay, clean slate. You know, let's let's take a breath, let's reset and have no regrets. And we've got some photos here of you, Nasia. We can skip over that one. <laughs> you don't still have that jacket? I don't. Nasia, don't worry, we're gonna talk more about the fashion moving forward. But Ellie, in 2008, you were only nine years old yourself. I don't think this was necessarily <laughs> from 2008, but how did you actually first get into gymnastics yourself? Mainly because obviously my older sister Becky was doing it and I was always pretty talented from a young age and I loved competing and going out there and winning. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Here's, uh, I think that's you and Becky, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're literally inseparable. <laughs> and Ellie, we know that you weren't in Beijing yourself, but were you watching on TV? Kind of take us through what your Beijing experience was from home. I kind of just remember waking up at like 3 a.m. to like watch her compete and I think it was me, my mom and my other sister, uh, my brothers were too lazy to get up at the time. <laughs> so it was just us three watching her and they did really well. I think they came ninth as a team and then Becky made the all around final. I love that, that's so cool. I, I love that you got up in the middle of the night and you just threw your brothers under the bus too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, Scott Bregman, you were busy competing yourself as a gymnast at the University of Michigan. What was your, I actually don't know this, what was your best apparatus? My best event was probably floor, but I would say I also excelled mostly at being a gymnastics geek, um, which has totally prepared me for my current job and this moment talking about Beijing, so. We've got a couple pictures here of you obviously competing. Talk about that form though. Coming from Nazia, yeah, that is like, that's a lot. Okay, you guys, so through the magic of Photoshop, we've placed our very own Scott Bregman in Beijing. Nastia, watching you. It is a game we're calling hashtag Spot Scott. You guys, here we go. We're gonna put these up and you've got to shout out when you see Scott. Let's find Scott. Found him. <laughs> Oh, poor Sam Pezik. Oh, uh, <laughs> she's gonna actually, go. I feel like she she would think this is funny and she would laugh. Yeah. Can we get a zoom on that, by the way? So that is uh, Scott Pezik <laughs> or Sam Bregman. Choose choose what you'd like. Let's go to our next one. All right, Ellie and Nastia, especially, go ahead and try to find Scott. Ellie, any hints? I mean, I'm thinking he's one of the coaches, but I'm not. 
the camera. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Hanging out. You're giving Sean some like just advice before she goes on floor. Yeah, just like she's about to get up there and I have one or two last minute tips. Okay, last but not least. Ooh, this one's hard. Scott, I didn't know you performed at the opening ceremony. Okay, Ellie and Nastia, shout out when you see him. I don't see me. <laughs> oh, I do see me, I do see me. Oh my gosh. Scott, that, I'm kind of surprised that you didn't wear that same outfit today. And also, Scott, you're supposed to be looking up. You're, the choreography's off. Oh, too good. Sam Peshek, we, we apologize from all I'm of really us. I'm really sorry, Sam. All right, it's time to do what we do best here on Time Machine. We are diving back into 2008. It is Beijing. It is the Women's Artistic Gymnastics Final. Let's go into the all around. Okay, so let's set the scene. Heading into Beijing 2008, there were two standout contenders for the women's individual all-around medal, Nastia Lukin and Sean Johnson. Best friends, Team USA teammates, even Olympic roommates. And while there was plenty of talent on show in the women's field, eyes were firmly fixed on the Lukin versus Johnson battle. The reigning world champ, Sean, headed in as the favorite, Nastia, coached by her dad and double Olympic gymnastics champ Valeri Lukin, knew everything needed to come together perfectly if she was going to win gold. Nastia, there, I mean, we could, we could talk about so many different angles of this, right? But for you walking into the arena, I love the image of you and Sean marching in and there's pressure on your shoulders, obviously. There's a lot of pressure for you individually, but what kind of really sticks out? I think you told Scott a couple years ago here on Olympic Channel that you just felt like you had this air of confidence walking into the arena that night. Where did that come from or, or how do you pinpoint that ahead of the gymnastics that you're able to produce? I just knew that I had essentially been training my whole entire career for this one moment. And my dad had truly built out this plan of peaking at this very moment. Obviously I'm the one that like performed it and did it, but I, I really have to give a lot of credit to my dad because it was a mastermind of a plan because it, came down to the exact day. I just don't think it was an accident that I was not quite my best at nationals or trials. You know, it was peaking towards the right moment. Everything came together on the very perfect kind of night. It was like looking back, it was like a fairy tale moment. Yeah, it serves to have a dad who has been to the Olympics himself, right? <laughs> yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to say that. I also want to point out the career that Nastia had, when she says that 2007 is the worst year of her career, she was world team champion, uh, fifth in the all-around with a fall at 2007 Worlds, uh, the uneven bar silver medalist, and world balance beam champion. So that was the, uh, the rough year. That Nasty okay, had to come again. <laughs> okay, okay. Backtrack okay. to na to nationals like three weeks before. I had six falls. So like that was the worst. <laughs> that was the worst. Not, ha like the year before the Olympics, you're gonna fall six times at nationals. Like I understand why people wanted to write me off. Like I totally get it. But um, thank you, Scott. <laughs> Ellie, I don't know if you wore that color on purpose today, but you are matching Nasty. I know. <laughs> I know that you were watching at home. I love that you got up in the middle of the night. What do you remember being this sort of young, impressionable gymnast, obviously watching your sister Becky, but I'm guessing that you were taking in what Sean and Nastia were doing as well. Yeah, I guess it was just, I love the competition because you and Sean were like so different. Like she was such a powerhouse gymnast and you were such a, elegant and equally powerful as well and it was just so nice to see the two different sides of gymnastics and I mean everything you did on the day was absolutely flawless like even like vault to beam like everything and I love that your dad is your coach as well I think that's just so like cute I love it <laughs> and Scott what was the discussion I mean I mean you were involved in this but for gymnastics fans here in in the U.S. what were what was kind of the discussion point around the women's all-around final 
Yeah, I mean, I think there was a lot of excitement because way back in 1884, the Mary Lou Retton wins the first gold medal for the U.S. women in the all-around. And they had been a long time, in 20 years, and Carly Patterson wins in 04. And I think going into 2008, we kind of knew that it was going to be another American. It was going to be Sean or Nasty. I think it was pretty clear. The two of you had made it clear that you were the two best gymnasts in the world. Um, and I think people were just excited to see how that was going to play out. Um, you know, on the biggest stage, finally. Scott, the media coverage in the U.S. was really intense. So this is from the Associated Press in the lead up. And the quote is, now Lucan versus Johnson is the best thing going in gymnastics, a friendly rivalry that will go all the way to Beijing. So that's in the lead up. That was May of 2008. In the lead up to Beijing, we've got Michael Phelps. We've got maybe a few other athletes. But the scrutiny, the spotlight from a media perspective, and Nasia, you're doing a very good job of, of taking the compliment, but that's a lot of pressure. You can say that it doesn't affect you, but it does, you know? And I think what Sean and I had in this back and forth all the time, and, and it was very like sided, like, well, I'm team Nasia, I'm team Sean. I think she's gonna win, I think she's gonna win. And it was just like, it started becoming like almost not healthy to like be thinking about all the time because you just need to go out there and do your gymnastics. And and that was like what my dad was just always kind of reminded me was like, don't, don't worry about what anyone else is saying. Like they're not the ones out there competing, you know, they're not the ones out there training seven hours a day. And, um, but of course, yeah, now being on the other side, I totally get that. And it was so exciting. What more could you want from, you know, like, from the media standpoint, from a TV standpoint, like it was so exciting and it was neck and neck, you know, pretty much the entire competition. Scott, do you I, want to weigh in there? Yeah, I think, you know, from a media perspective, like the funny thing of probably is that, um, you know, it's very easy to draw contrast between Sean and Nastia. You know, Nastia is born in Russia and Sean has spent her whole life to that point in Iowa. And, you know, Sean is a little shorter and more powerful and Nastia has these long legs and is, you know, their body types are totally different. The funny thing is, and, that, and that's very easy to play into for, uh, you know, TV and for other media. The funny thing is probably though that their lives are almost like, identical, basically, right? Like you spent your entire lives growing up in the gym. You guys have been friends forever. Like you have so much in common, but it was so easy to focus on some of the things that were, were, were different. Well, and that's what I mean, like, we we were so similar, like, down to, like, we were, like, both reading the Twilight series. We were, had both um, the Juicy Couture velour sweatsuit outfits were very in in 2008, and we both had those. So it was, like, down to, like, being teenage girls, we truly were so similar. And yes, like, I wasn't born in this country, and, you know, I didn't smile when I competed, and, like, all, like... All of that stuff was just, it definitely like played into it, but that's why it was so funny for us because we were so similar and we really were such good friends that we were just like, wait, what? Like, why, why is this a thing? You know, we're just like friends competing. We talk about it all the time now, but it's just like, we hate that we let that get to us because we really, we really did have so much in common, um, you know, both as athletes and as people. And I'm also sort of curious, what it was like for Ellie to sort of see these, I think Ellie, you're, you're sort of the perfect combination of Sean and Nastia. You're, you know, so powerful, but, you know, slightly taller than the average. I, I'm just curious if when you're watching them, you're like, and it, maybe now, because when maybe when you were eight, you weren't above average height for a, a gymnast, but now you see that these like two women who push each other and have totally different styles, like you're the combination of both of them. Yeah, I, I would always say I'm like, I'm quite a different gymnast. I feel like you're either shorter and more powerful or like taller and more elegant. And I'm kind of both, which is a bit rare. <laughs> and I also feel like I just look so much taller than everyone else, but I'm really only like five foot three. <laughs> so it's just like, just cause gymnasts are so tiny, I guess. Especially at Youth Olympics, I was like this much bigger than like everybody else. like. Literally on the podium, like I was third, and literally they're like here, and then it's like here, bam. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, why am I so much taller? But I generally think, like, I do obviously do get higher when I tumble, but I do think the length of me makes it look higher as well. Um, because everyone always says to me on bolt, like, oh my god, your straight's huge, and then like 
I look at other people and so I'm like, well, theirs is big, but they're just like not as long. So it just doesn't look as, as big. Wait, but that didn't ever really work out for me because I was <laughs> long and I didn't really get the height that you get on vault. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I feel like that is so cool. Like whether it was in 2008 um, and even now, you know, I think it just makes it so special to be able to see such different gymnasts and different body types and different styles. And, you know, I think it's um, watching, you know, you, Ellie, like you and Becky, like both of you guys are so, so much the same, but also still so different. And it's just, it's so special, like down to being sisters, right? Like we talk about Sean and I, but it's like you guys even. And um, I just think that's what makes the sport so unique. And Ellie, I'm curious for you, because the British media pays such attention to the Olympics in particular, you know, you go and win a fistful of medals in Nanchang at the Youth Olympic Games in 2014. How much did you feel like that, that maybe gave you some bounce in your step as far as your senior career, but then also puts a spotlight, as Nastia is talking about, as to what the expectations were for you in Rio? Uh, yeah, like coming off the back of that, like obviously Nanjing, it's like one person from each country. So I obviously felt pressure going to do well for the country as it was just me representing British gymnastics, really. Um, so obviously I felt pressure with that. And the competition was like, it went obviously well for me. And then coming home, there was like a bit of media attention, like going into 2015, I won my first all-around medal at the Europeans and I'd made history because it had never been done before and I was so young and that was a lot of hype around that. Obviously going into the Olympic year I'd had all this success I did feel a little bit of pressure and it was a lot and everything was just going a bit too well to be true I'd say. <laughs> it was very rocky from podium training day up until the competition and then my qualification day was like a bit of a living nightmare <laughs> like, and I got to floor and just did the craziest two and a half punch to my head so I stopped and like, mm. stopping mid Florida at the Olympic Games I was like what is going on <laughs> somehow I still got a 12 god knows how like, obviously the Olympic Games was such an amazing experience but it was also like so disappointing that all my years leading up to it were like fantastic and then just, it wasn't even like just one bad comp, it was like almost three, like just competitions that weren't like me. And I just think like we just went out too late and we didn't adjust in enough time and there was yeah. just too much playing, like going into it, like we didn't give ourselves the best chances. Hopefully next year it will go so much better. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many different dynamics at play. And, you know, Ellie, obviously your accomplishment on the vault, it speaks for itself, you know, with the world medal that you have and hopefully maybe earning a medal in Tokyo next year. But Nasi, I want to start on your vault in Beijing because this wasn't your best apparatus. And you walk out there and you were pretty dang happy after this because I think you essentially did what you needed to do. Yeah, I mean, this was the best I could have ever done in my entire life. It was just, you know, vault, obviously I didn't have the highest level of difficulty, so I always tried to excel on the execution side of things, like the, the absolute best that I could do. And so I feel like that was pretty much the best that I could have done. Yeah, Scott, I mean, she's ninth place after that first rotation, but that was no cause for concern because it being Nastia's weakest apparatus. Yeah, I mean, I think it's actually the complete opposite for, of cause for concern because it was like, bang, I'm here, I'm gonna do it. This is like the best, you know, obviously I don't think uh, I, I don't want to speak for Nasi, but I don't think she expected to be leading after vault. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was, it was it was sort of the opposite. It was like, oh, she's not messing around. Like, this is going to be a good night. And Scott, this was the first Olympics, right, that it wasn't the perfect 10 score. I mean, for so long, gymnastics had been the perfect 10, and now it was sort of as the difficulty dictated how high that score could go. Right, and I think that was another X factor that obviously Valeria and Nastia used very well, you know, maybe her vault wasn't the most difficult in the competition, but her bar routine actually was the most difficult in the competition. And so, you know, they were very strategic, obviously, in, in playing to Nasia's strengths, um, so that, you know, maybe a little deficit on vault was certainly overcome when she moved to bars. 
if I didn't do a good bar routine, I then had to have a little luck on my side that someone else was not going to do well. Like, and, and that's not what I ever obviously wanted. So it was just, that was the event that I was always most nervous on. Um, it was my best event, but I felt like an enormous amount of pressure on that event because that's where I made up all my ground on vault and then hopefully, you know, a little bit more. I just feel like bars are so fast. Like beam, I guess you land a skill and you have time to like kind of breathe and pause if you need to, whereas bars is just like, go, go, go. Like you just can't stop. For you to go through bars and beam the way that you did into floor. I mean, Scott said it to me before, you you just put all the pieces together. There's this Olympic gold medal puzzle that maybe you you knew you had the pieces to prior, but what's the mentality once you get through bars and get through beam when you know that, okay, maybe I'm maybe things are coming together? Or do you let yourself think that? I don't know. Oh, of course. Like you can't not let yourself think that like as much as you try not to. And as soon as I landed my beam routine, I was like, whoa, I'm about to win the Olympics, you know? And then my score came up and then I got like very excited, ran over to floor warm up and I crashed. <laughs> like literally like on my, not as scary as you. And my dad was like, you can like see him, I think. I mean, he's like, calm down. And like, I think I was just like overly excited. And um, yeah, I took a deep breath. And then I think I was like second to last to go on floor. And Talk about just a little bit of delivering here on this floor and then the feeling thereafter of having to wait and, and then knowing that you've indeed won the Olympics. Once you get through a certain skill, you're like, okay, I'm good, I got this. And after my third tumbling pass going into my last, I just had to do like a, my double turn. I wanted to make sure I got like that full credit. And then, yeah, my last pass was just fairly easy and simple, especially compared to so many others. But I think I knew in that moment, but of course you have to wait till the final score and then the final competitor, obviously. But um, it was a moment that I'll remember like for the rest of my life with my dad was just incredibly special. You know, the first person that was there that I could, you know, embrace in, in a hug and, and a smile. And, and, you know, it was just to have my dad right there was just, I, to this day, is just like so special. Ellie, what's your impression of watching all of this and just seeing it play back in front of you? Um, I think it's just like such the teamwork you have between you and your dad. Like, it's just so rare to get such a good connection like that. and to know that you both did it like together is just so cool and so amazing and like you said just to see everything go so well and so perfectly on one night like it's just like so incredible and scott you've talked about that exactly what ellie's saying is that it did all come together for nastia in that in, in the olympic moment <laughs> i mean it's it's, there's nothing more to say, right? It's the, the best meet of Nastia's life on the most important night of her life. I want to go back to that moment where Sean and Nastia pass each other because I think it says so much because they, like I said earlier, they were they had clearly established themselves as the two best students in the world. And I, I know Nastia has said this to me before. They, they pushed each other to that point. And maybe without the other, they wouldn't have been where they were. Yeah, the moment Sean and I had first was just like very normal. You know, it was just something that we always did, um, whether it was you got this, whatever, just a quick pass moment. Um, I feel like that photo though, it just like speaks a million words, right? It's like so many people pitted, pitted us against each other, yet we still wanted the best for each other. As Scott kind of mentioned, like we truly brought out the best in each other. And we also made history. We were the first um, American duo to go one, two in the all around at the Olympic games. And so, um, you know, that was, that was really special. All right, well, no gymnastics meet is complete without judges, and it's time for our panel to flip the script a little bit and become judges themselves in what we like to call the scores, please. All right, so we've talked about some iconic moments here from 2008. I want you guys to pick between three. Scott, I'm going to start with you. What was the most iconic moment? We've got 
Uh, Nastia and her dad embracing after the floor routine, the high five between uh, Sean and Nastia, or Nastia, teary-eyed, national anthem playing on the podium. I think it, for me it was a moment right before the anthem, um, and Nastia for the first time hears the overhead announcer say, a gold medalist and Olympic champion, Nastia Lukin. And that's, there's this moment, uh, you know, your arms go up, and there's a moment where you, I, you kind of sort of see the realization that you had done it. And I think to me that was so inspiring because I gave you, you know, some trouble about calling 2007 the worst year of your career, but you really had overcome a lot to get to that point and, it, and had to fight a lot of um, what people were saying about you. And I think that was inspirational at the time to me. Uh, and I think that's still inspirational now as we're uh, 12 <clears throat> years uh, removed from it. What about for you, Ellie? Um, probably on the podium when she's like teary-eyed. Um, I mean, I've only had that feeling once at Europeans, but I mean, it's like, it's just the best feeling ever. Okay, Nastia, I mean, they're, they're all your moments, so. I know, that moment that I heard those words next to my name, it was something that, you know, you dream about when you're a little girl. And I knew like, this would be something that would stick with me for the rest of my life. You know, it was something that no one could now take away from me. Okay, in the scores, please, we like to get pretty creative. And so, Nastia, it was a, a seemingly perfect night for you, obviously, right? You win Olympic gold, but you did have that fall in the warm up of the floor routine, which you've talked about. So I'm gonna give you the bounce back award. And yeah. <laughs> which is obviously uh, for you being able to bounce back. And I just wanted to make you feel a little bit better by showing you that our very own Scott Bregman had this incident. <laughs> Let's loop that back. So Scott, set the scene for us here. This isn't the Olympics, by the way, right? I mean, it was my personal Olympics. Dancing in uh, one of my very best friend's wedding. I was in the wedding um, and I, uh, I did some back handsprings and um, I had my own crash. <laughs> I mean, so many questions. A, were you okay and was he okay? <laughs> uh, I was in better shape than he was, but in the end, we were both okay, yes. Ellie, what oh, was your man. reaction to that? I mean, you could clearly see, right, that Scott just tumbled into someone's face with his, those were very hard-toed shoes, right, Scott? <laughs> yeah. He kind of just got hit and just didn't get up. <laughs> like, at least you <laughs> rolled over and, like, looked like you were okay. <laughs> he does get up, but the person that was filming it, I think, panicked so much that uh, it stopped there. <laughs> Okay, Scott, I mean, no longer do we have the perfect 10, but that deserves a perfect 10. Let's go ahead and talk about 2008. And I want to know from your guys' perspective, what screams 2008 the most? So we've got Yang Yi Lin. She wore hair clips all over her head. I think we saw some of those in the all around. We also saw no phones in the crowd. We have digital cameras and binoculars everywhere. Um, and then we also have, I think, the fashionably 2008 bump in Nastia's hair. What is the most iconic 2008 look or moment, Nastia? Gosh, the bump. Like, I feel like it was just, yeah, like when I learned how to do it, it was like there was a technique to it. You had to like do a little twist thing and you had to make sure you had a clip in the back. Yeah, that was not not really necessarily the cutest look. You know, you have a pink scrunchie you have to wear, so little bump. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, what do you think? I'd probably say Jan Yilin's clips because that was just like, they were pretty Iconic, <laughs> it's so iconic. <laughs> It was more like, how does she get that many in her hair? Like, right. Yeah, like the placement, the strategic <laughs> placement of them all. We've been traveling back to 2008 the entire time, but it's time to look at some of Nastia's best fashion in and outside of competition in a game we're calling How's Nastia Lucan? The very first look is you guys, so let's score this out of 10. What do we think of the Olympic style here from Nastia Lucan? Nastia, what do you score yourself out of 10? It's the individual all-around finals. Obviously, I, I understand you're representing your country, but I feel like this is a good time to just 
express yourself and like what you want to wear. Um, I do agree. I think for team competitions, you should be patriotic. Um, I was very excited to wear pink. I think a lot of people probably were not as thrilled, but I was excited about it. <laughs> so is that a is that a personal ten? I'm hearing. Oh. I don't know what we're going against, so I don't want to set my like bar too high. I'll give it a nine, I guess. <laughs> Ellie, what about you? I like the leotard, so I'm going to go for a 10. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no, I love it. Okay, let's go to our next Nastia Luke. And this one's a little more bold on the shoulder. I think that, you know, you, you can either go the safe route or you can yeah. go the route of just like being a little different. So it's, it's hit or miss amongst people. Ellie, what do you give this one? Is this a 10 as well? Yeah, I love the big shoulders and the long ponytail. I love a good hair moment. <laughs> okay, so we go from a hair moment to a hat moment. This is oh, for... <laughs> my gosh. This Clearly is... right before London. Yeah, this is the promo shoot for, for London, right? This is a negative five. <laughs> I mean, come on, Ellie. She's giving your country a little shout out here. <laughs> I don't want to be too harsh, but I'm not digging the hat. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I agree with you. Okay, well, Nastia has scored herself, Scott, a negative five here, but I feel like you might disagree. I actually, you know what, for me, it, it uh, nothing will, can top the Olympic look uh, that's iconic, but this is close for me. This is pretty iconic, I think, as well. Okay, so we've reached the end of our time machine trip back to Beijing 2008 and Nastia, your golden triumph at the Summer Olympics. I want to close out real quick here with what memory will stand out for each of you the most. And uh, Scott Bregman, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's the one I mentioned earlier, which is that moment where Nastia realizes that she's Olympic champion because, as I said, like, you know, Nasia had, you know, a very bad ankle injury in 2006 that then affected her 2007, which then, you know, sort of put a lot of doubt on this dream that she'd been working for for so, so long. And I think, you know, that moment where Nasia hears it, you know, we've seen shots of her dad watching this moment. I mean, I think it has, it has everything and it's um, so inspirational. Yeah, awesome. Okay, uh, Ellie Downey, first off, thank you so much for being with us, for sharing your memories with all of us, and what sticks out the most uh, for you from Beijing 2008? Um, I would probably say when she comes off the floor and gives her dad a hug, and it's just like such an emotional moment, and like, I guess, relief for her and her dad, um, knowing that they've just made their dreams come true. Yeah, and you obviously know that gymnastics is a family affair. And we're wishing you the best of luck as you get ready for Tokyo 2020. Nastia, the pressure's on here because we want you to pick your moment and that's how we're gonna close out the show. What would you like us to play out here from Beijing? Oh gosh, it's hard to pick one thing. At the end of the day, like you're left, you know, with your family and your loved ones. And I think especially in a year like 2020, we've all kind of realized that. And so, um, you know, it's, it's obviously so fun reminiscing back on, on the results, but I think it's like, it's the small things like, you know, the embrace with my dad, um, you know, high-fiving Sean right before she went, um, the, the little moments that, you know, kind of have really made um, those experiences, everything to me and hard to kind of pinpoint one thing, but, um, I think in a year, like in a year, like today, it's just, it's, it's all the little moments that, you know, that make it, um, memorable. Yeah, well, Nastia, thank you for letting us relive your Beijing glory with you, obviously. Ellie Downey, thank you so much. Best of luck to you and to Team GB. Scott Bregman of Olympic Channel, thank you as well. And as Nastia said, it's the little moments that brought together the big moment. Let's put together a little montage as we bid you farewell. Stay tuned for our next episode. Stay safe. We'll see you guys soon. <laughs>